on doing this tomorrow. I made them because God said make them last night. So you know what I was doing last night for a little while? I was putting them together. And you say, but why would you put them together if you're not going to pass them out? Because my king told me to put them together. Whether I pass them out or don't pass them out, whether he passes them they got my name on there so it ain't going to do any good if I die today for it. You ought to pass them out unless you scratch out my name and put the, uh, somebody who's a good pastor's name on there. I mean, it's not, it's not going to do you any good. But we printed them because God said print them. Put it together because God said put it together. Now, I'm trying to get us to understand something. I'm not looking at what I do tomorrow. I'm prepared for tomorrow if it comes. Because God said do something today. I need his wisdom on what to do today, not what to do tomorrow. If you lack wisdom, you don't lack wisdom for tomorrow, you lack wisdom now. Ask for the wisdom of God. Do you ask him? Do you ask him God for wisdom? Look at it. Why do we ask God for wisdom? Because we lack wisdom. We don't have His wisdom without. And so, don't just ask for wisdom, but then ask God for a word from God. A word from God. The Lord has given me the tongue to learn that I may know how to speak a word in season to them that are weary. He opened it the morning by morning. He opened my ear to hear as a learner. I need God to give me a word. A word. Now I find a word in the word. Which is why we need to spend much time in the word. So we can get a word from God. Because there are weary people out there that need a word. That man needed a word when he finds out his daughter's dead over in Mark chapter 5. He needed a word from God. And God said, don't worry about it. I got it under control. She's not dead. She's sleeping. See, Jesus was sensitive. He wasn't looking for what to do tomorrow. He was looking for right to do now. He was trying to be sensitive, saying, I need an answer from the Father now on what to say now. I need to know whether to stop and help this older woman out now or keep making my journey down there to go down there and help this young child out now. Then when he stops and it doesn't go the way everybody thinks it ought to go because this young girl died, he says, okay, I just need a word now. I need wisdom and a word now. We ought to be asking for wisdom. We ought to be asking for word. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. A word of encouragement. A word of enlightenment. You and I ought to be asking God, God, give us words now. Because they need them now. We need them now. I need your wisdom now. I need a word now. I, give us this day that sweet manna from heaven. That word in season for the middle word. Today's burdens are all anybody has. You don't have tomorrow's burdens. Why do we keep borrowing from tomorrow? We spend our life worrying about something that's not necessarily going to happen. When the truth of the matter is, that's why we're not enjoying the Lord in this moment. Thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. It's all we have is today's burdens. Sufficient unto day is the evil thereof. That's what 634 says in Matthew. The context of what he's dealing with here. When he's saying ask, listen, he's saying ask for what you need now. Ask for what we need today. Seek 
for what we need to do? What do we need to seek for? When we ask for the wisdom of God, we ask for the word of God, we need to seek the will of God. Seek the will of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's his will for my life. And his righteousness. That's his glory through my life. Righteousness brings glory. When I work righteousness, men shall see my good works and glorify my father. And, and, and men shall see my good works and they'll glorify my father, which is in heaven. You're the light of the world. Let your light shine before men. Come, that they may see your good works. Come, and glorify your father, which is in heaven. My good works do two things. It, it makes people be able to observe them and it glorifies my father. When we do good works, now, men don't glorify him. We glorify him by our good works. That's that promise there for. Is that not that men shall see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven? That men shall see your good works, comma, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Two different things. God wants our good works so that he can get glory. So we seek first the kingdom of God. That's his will for me right now. And then we seek and we do it that we glorify in His righteousness. The righteousness of God brings glory to God. It brings peace. It brings power. It brings the things that we need that will glorify Him in our body and our spirit which belong to Him. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which you have of God? And ye are not your own, therefore glorify God. In your body and your spirits, which are God. We belong to Him. Therefore, what do we do? We work the works of righteousness that He might get glory. We accomplish His will that He might get glory. We need to see what is the will of God right now. Not for next year. I mean, some would say, well, yeah, we need to figure out what the will of God is for next year. Why? Why worry about next year? You say, for young Richard, where am I going to go to school? What am I going to do? Am I going to be able to, to make it to the major leagues or to the minor leagues by next year? What am I going to do for next year? Prepare yourself today. Doing what God wants you to do today. You know what happens next year? He'll put you where he wants you. You say, what? Yeah. He tells you to call it a scout. You call it a scout. He tells you don't call any scouts, you don't call any scouts. He tells you to play baseball over this place, you don't play baseball over this place. If he tells you to quit playing baseball, you quit playing baseball. He tells you to work out, you work out. He tells you don't work out, you don't work out. He tells you to work harder in school. He does tell you that. You say, how do you know he tells you that? Because you know about your parents. He told you that. Your parents say work harder in school. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is real simple. Next year is going to take care of itself. Now what happens? It takes the pressure off your life when I don't have to the care of the world on me. And I can enjoy living for the king. Now I'd ask this question. How many people can live through something ten more minutes? All the pain you got, could you live for ten more minutes? But what if you said, I can't live for this in two more weeks? Two more months. Two more years. I can't live in this marriage in two more years. I can't live in this family two more years. I can't live in the situation in this house two more years. I can't live without hot water two more years. I can't live without a refrigerator two more years. Can you live for it two more hours? Now that's a fair question. Can you get through two more hours? Can you get through the day? The burden you have. The morrow will take care of itself. But if you're living saying it'll never change, then you're living like the heathen do and you're saying I've got to do something to make it change. And the truth of the matter is 
A lot of things you can't do anything to make it change. So he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and I'll take care of the rest. I'll take care of everything else. Now I told you I'm not preaching against a person going to work. I go to work every day. But I do not go to work because I'm worried about work paying the bills. I'm worried, and here's what I'm doing. I'm going to work because God said, take that child. Go to work. Do a good, do a good, good job. And guess what? I'll use that to pay the bills. Be a witness to those that work. Have a good testimony to those that work. Love me while you're at work. When you get a chance, take, take a break. Memorize scripture at work. Listen to the Bible at work. And guess what? Men see your good works. They say, wow. That's a Christian. Wow. He's not one of what's moping all the time. And he's not super judgmental beating us up all the time. He's just living for God and enjoying God. And God supplies my need. Seek the will of God. If you seek Him today, next week we'll take care of your seed. What good is worrying about next month? It's a wrap for happens today. I thought about this. Kingdom living will never be done tomorrow. We must seek to live for the king today. Now. Seek. Ask. Seek. Not. God desires threefold. Ask. Seek. And not. There's a desire that's asking. And asking the desire to have. Seeking, there's a discovery to be found. A discovery to be found. And knocking. Oh, there's the light to enter. Why did Peter in Acts chapter 10, I believe it is, no, Acts 12, in Acts chapter 12, why was he knocking at the, the gate of the door? The door of the gate. Why was he knocking? Because he wanted to enter. Why is the Lord in Revelation 3.20 knocking at the door? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and then will he with me. The reason you're not is because you want to enter into the, the delight. A delight to enter. We desire God's wisdom. We de de desire God's word. We discover God's will. We discover God's way. But we need to enter in and delight in, his, in the experience of His world of his wonderfulness. Now I'll give you this and I'm done. Because there's so much that I can bring to you. We look at these verses down here and he says enter ye in at the straight gate. We have used that verse dealing with how to get saved. And then he saved. There is the truth to that. The only way to enter into salvation is to go in through the straight gate. You have to get rid of everything else. But he's not talking about that in that verse. The context is not salvation. He's talking about kingdom living, kingdom praying. He's talking about you just were knocking. Why do you knock? Because you want to enter. And he said, you know what? If you knock, it'll be over. But for you to enter in and enjoy, you're going to have to leave everything else outside the door. You can't bring your worries inside the door and enjoy the kingdom. 
You cannot bring all your heartaches of tomorrow, all your concerns about tomorrow, inside and enjoy the kingdom of God. Fear the broad way that the world tries to tell you of. God will take care of your tomorrows. God says, wait a minute. I'm going to take care of you today. Tomorrow. Why are you even thinking about tomorrow? Take no thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of We'll worry about yourself. The reason we do not enjoy kingdom living is because we're so worried about the morrow. And the morrow is not even how we're supposed to live. We're supposed to live with our eyes on the king today. Let him take care of today. He's already got tomorrow to worried about. He can worry about that. He knows what he's doing. And you and I live a miserable life worrying about how we're going to be able to pay the bills tomorrow. I'm telling you how to pay the bills tomorrow. Do what God wants you to do today. Now the world will take that and say, well, live for today. Live for today. Live for today. That's what I'm preaching. And they'll say, so do whatever you feel like today. That's because they got the wrong king. And they enjoy their king today. Their king happens to be safe. Their king happens to be their family. Their king happens to be their friend. And so when enjoy what they say, that's what we're going to enjoy today. Our king is God eternal who takes care of us. And if he's our king and we want to enjoy him, then why don't we enjoy him today? Don't worry about tomorrow. And guess what happens? Tomorrow shows up, or it doesn't. See, they say, oh no, I want to enjoy today. And they have to take their high, heart, high blood pressure medicine. And I'm not, I'm not down to this, the diabetes medicines. They're on oxygen. All because they said, I'm going to live for today for my king, which happens to be me. You're ready to do it today. She says,